Hello, hello. Let me bring in my other host. Hey, Calissa. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. That's good. So at the start of our show, we are going to be on YouTube and Facebook. We're streaming on both platforms today. So y'all excuse me today as I try to just navigate through the different platforms and make sure that I have everything set up. So just give me one moment. So I, I know we're now November 1st. And everything mm -hmm. is now with a new mom. And as you come in, can you please share the video and let people know that you're here and drop in a comment section in the comment section to let us know that you are also here um, so that we can welcome you and greet you in. Um, so at the start of this, like I said, I'm just doing some quick housekeeping because you know we, we're doing something different today. We are on YouTube, so. <laughs> Just trying to make sure that everything is fine there. Okay, so let me go here. All right. So as you know, we're going to be talking about David versus Goliath. And so we're going to be talking about how to bring down the giants in your life. And so before we get into what we're going to talk about today, it's going to be exciting and something that's so timely for a time like this. So, Kalissa, can you start us off with our opening prayer? All right, um, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for another Sunday. Uh, on the first day, we made it to the first day of November. Thank you, God. Be with us, strengthen us, give us faith you know, over fear and hope over despair during times of adversity and obstacles. Give us yeah. wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as we go through this virtual Bible study to unpack the story of David and Goliath. Yeah. Continue to be with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. So let us go and hop right into now our opening scripture. I'm just going to pull that up. Okay. So. All right, Calista, go for it. All right. The opening scripture is taken from 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 47. And it goes like this. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day, I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistine to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Amen. Amen. All right, so that is definitely a scripture that we're gonna be unpacking further as we go through our study today. And so just to um, give us some more context of what we are discussing about David and Goliath. I know a lot of you, if you grew up in church, you would have heard about the topic of David versus Goliath, but um, we wanna go ahead and give a little bit more context to it. So Calissa, can you just give a little bit more background on um, David and Goliath? Okay, then. So let me start. Um, before I go into the story of David and Goliath itself, let me go and give you a little background story, like you said. Um, so mm -hmm. Israel has already been living in the promised land. Judges 2 says, after the whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. 
Then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served the Baals. They forsook the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of Egypt. They followed and worshipped various gods of the peoples around them. They arose, they aroused the Lord's anger. So God would punish them in Judges. Um, in the book of Judges, um, God would punish them by raising enemies to oppress them. They would repent and he would provide judges to deliver them. One of the main enemies they had was that of the Philistines. So, um who was a main enemy that they had during that time. So now we move to Samuel, the first Samuel. Now, Samuel, he was one of the good judges. Um, he was a good, he was so good that in chapter eight of the book of first Samuel, when he got old, he appointed his sons as leaders and the people did not want them because they were nothing like Samuel. Mm. So they asked for a king. They got Saul, you know, now Saul was good looking. He was a good looking man, but he had flaws. He was disobedient, dishonest, and prideful. So basically he lacked integrity. And because of that, the Lord rejected Saul as king. And you can see that whole story in chapter 15. And had Samuel anoint David as king, who later became Saul's harpist and armor bearer. Now, now we get to the story of David and Goliath. Like I said earlier, the Philistines are one of Israel's main enemies. This goes far back to Exodus. And if those who read Exodus would know, the Israelites purposely took a southern route to circumvent the Philistines when they were leaving Egypt. Now, the champion fighter of the Philistines during that time um, was Goliath. He was said to be six cubits and a span tall, which in feet is nine foot nine inches and fully armored with his weapon. So I would assume he was very intimidating um, to the people around him. Now, let me put this in perspective. The tallest NBA player was seven foot seven. And currently the tallest man alive is eight foot two inches, two inch, mm. right? And I don't know about you, but even looking at them can be intimidating. <laughs> he was also very cocky, which we could understand. After all, he was the champion fighter. And to prove my point, he came out every morning and evening and stood before the Israelite army, basically insulting Israel for 40 days. So now David came on the scene because he was told by his father to head down to the army camp to give some food supplies to his brothers and check out the situation there and reported to his dad. So while he was there, he saw Goliath, heard men talking about the situation and what the king decreed, basically saying that whoever defeats this man will get a great reward. You can read all about it in chapter 17, 17 of 1 Samuel. And David did not see him face or intimidated by Goliath. He basically said, who is this dude that he should talk against the armies of the living God? So his brothers heard him and basically told him, why are you here? Go home, <laughs> you know. Right. And um, the king, during that same moment, heard about it and he sent for David um, who told him that he'll take down Goliath. So David told him, Hey, I could take him down. You know, the King was not convinced by this because he said in verse 33 of chapter 17, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him for you are a youth and he, a man of war from his youth. But David said, you know, he was qualified to because he defeated lions and bears who came to attack his flock. Now, when he said you are a youth, it is said that during that time, um, David was under the age of 20 when he defeated Goliath. OK, so just to put a little note in there. So you can see he, he was he said basically he was qualified because he was defeating he had defeated lions and bears when he was trying to protect his flock and the Lord will deliver him the same way. So the king armored him up and he went to fight Goliath with a slingshot. Now, I said Goliath was haughty. And so seeing this little boy come in to fight him, 
he considered this a joke and an easy win. <laughs> All right. But he was underestimated. You know, he underestimated the favor of God um, that, you know, the favor that God had on David's life and the faith David had in God. And this lowly shepherd boy defeated Goliath. All so right. Felicia, handed it over to you. All right. So now let's be, let's get a good job as far as giving us a, a full background on the story of David and Goliath. And so we want to now go and further unpack this and to bring it into more perspective about how you can bring down giants in your life. But before we hop into that, we already got some shout outs here. Um, y'all, let's keep the sharing going on. I can see the sharing is up. Can y'all keep it going? A lot of people um, know about it. Like, um, we want to welcome to the virtual Bible study. We have Philip and Bristol's here. Thank you for joining us. Welcome. Um, he said, good afternoon. We also have Rosetta Dorset who was here um, joining us on Facebook and she says, good afternoon. Time to slay some giants. That is so right. Love the energy and the enthusiasm. Um, so that's just what we're gonna talk about. We also have Philip Ambrissa Sr. here who is saying hi, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. And so let us go into now looking at some points again, like how I said, how you can slay dragons or bring down, not dragons, I'm a dra <laughs> giants in your giants. life. Yes, <laughs> giants, you're on giants today. Um, so yeah. the first thing is that we talk about or looking at the perception or sight of the giant. And the that alone can be considered to be intimidating. And as Calissa would have talked about earlier, she mentioned the height of Goliath. He was super tall. Can you imagine? We think NBA players at all. Or you think when you look at the Guinness, um, Book of, Guinness World Book of Records, am I saying that right? Guinness Book World of Records, I think that's how you say it. We look at that person and be like, oh mm -hmm. my goodness, that is, Paul, okay? Um, but then the Bible also goes on to explain that Goliath had a bronze helmet on his head. So he had this armor on. He had um, something to cover his shin. So we see somebody who was like fully decked out. And this is how we look at giants in our lives. Like when you look at that or anyone, you, you're short and you see this massive thing in front of you all decked out. That alone can take your nerve and make you fearful, okay? So... That is one thing to think about. And um, another point I wanted to mention, I think Alyssa talked about it um, when she was giving the background. It was about the length of time that um, the giant or Goliath kept on uh, um, going in front of, of the Israelites and challenging them. And so it was for 40 days that the Philistines came forward every morning and every um, evening. And he took his stand and the fear of his presence really gripped the Israelites. And you know, when we think about our lives, there are some Goliaths in our lives, okay? Not necessarily talking about just tall people. Um, you were talking about Goliaths in the form or giants in the form of um, health challenges. When we talk about cancer, diabetes, hypertension. Um, when we think about financial problems, when we think about marital, marital problems, struggles with um, pregnancy or infertility, addictions such as substance abuse, um, sexual addictions, um, joblessness, co coping with the loss of a loved one, heartbreak, depression, these are sort of giants that we think about having low self-esteem, um, feeling too old to pursue higher education, getting at that college or university degree. Um, and a Goliath or a giant is anything that is in your life that places you in fear and causes your faith to shake. So when you think about giants, that they are the type of things that um, you would think about. Um, another thing is negative thought. Now, as you talked about, Kalissa, in the it, with the reference to the scripture, the story, you talked about. Um, I heard about Saul as well. And I'm not sure, I think you also talked about the brothers or his, his family as well, right? Right. Yeah. And so this highlights- and, and, and King Saul. Yes. And so this, this highlights um, negative thoughts 
You know, oftentimes when we face in big obstacles in our lives, these giants, um, you, you get negative thoughts. And we see that these negative thoughts that discourage you from conquering the giants in your life. You can see that Saul said to David, you are not able to go out against the Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man. People again remind you always the time of always of your limits and what you can't do, you know? Um, mm -hmm. and it goes, exactly. And it goes on even, even with your family or people who are close to you, they also can be ones who are reminding you of so-called perceived limits. And they always mm -hmm. you have family members or close friends or close people in your circle who want to make sure that they put you into a box. And we see that mm -hmm. inside with um David when his oldest brother heard him speaking to the men, because David was trying to get more information about this battle, um, he, he was burned with anger. And he said, why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? Reminding him again, like, hey, hey, stay in your lane. What are you doing to go here, you know? <laughs> and so when you're trying to conquer giants in your life, you have to be careful of the thoughts that are being entertained in your mind. Because if you give in too much of those negative thoughts, you will not be able to conquer giants. And as we go through this season of life where a lot of us are having um, a lot of things that it, they're not going according to plan because life just gave us a big spin, <laughs> you know, we, we're really challenging or, or in battle with negative thoughts that are telling us, oh, this life, this year is a waste or we have nothing going on. We, we're constantly in that type of a struggle. Uh, and another thing I wanna bring out too, we're going to look at the resumes of David, and we're going to look at the resume of Goliath. Before I get into that, I just want to give some quick shout outs on YouTube. We get YouTube in the house. Let me put up some comments from YouTube. We get a greeting coming in from Miss Sona Level. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to our show. Um, we also have we also have Radcliffe Roll in the house saying good day, coming in from YouTube. Yay, we have YouTube here. So excited. And we have another comment coming in from Rosetta Dorset here on Facebook, and it says, Giants look hard to penetrate and really creates fear. But God, he has the power to make the giant fall. And that is so true. So now yeah. going back to um, the resumes of David and Goliath. So when we look at the resume of Goliath, we see somebody... Not only is he tall and fierce looking, but he was also a champion, okay? So he had the record to prove that he can fight a battle and win it. And then we looked over to David, and David's mm -hmm. resume was simply a sheep keeper. But one of the mm -hmm. things that, um, the most powerful thing that was really on his resume that the physical eye could not see, and that was found in verse 37 of 1 Samuel 17, which said, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. And that showed that the, one of the biggest things that David had going for him was his faith in God. And so as you compare situations, you can even look in life. Even if you go into certain situations, you'll be comparing things and be like, I don't see him qualified on the face of it. But if you get God on your side, there is nothing that you cannot accomplish or that is too impossible that God cannot handle. So I just want to remind you of that as you go through life or even if you go and apply for a job or want to go after a particular dream, just keep that in mind. Once you get God on your side, there is nothing that's impossible. Um, another thing I, I want to mention is from this story is handling your current situation with grace. And why I say that is when we look at um, David's situation, people just saw David as a sheep keeper. But what he was doing was actually preparing himself for a big moment, for this big moment, for this battle. That's what a lot of people did not see. Because during that time when he was a sheep keeper, he was able to fight bears and lions in order to protect the sheep. And this highlights that whatever situation um, or position that you are in, that you are to handle it with grace because you do not know what that particular moment is preparing you for. As we go through this moment of so much uncertainty and, and things just seem so unclear, handle this moment with grace because you don't know what this 
particular low moment or humble moment is preparing you for. It's preparing you for a moment of something greater when you can use these same skills that you're going through now to be able to conquer and have your big moment in life. And we see that, that the Lord, even in this moment, I see it as a moment of preparation. And so as you go through a time that you consider to be your humble period, see it as a preparation period for something bigger, your big event, your big battle. And so, um, as I said, David dealing with the sheep and, and having to fight off lions and, and bears, um, that was his preparation moment. Another mm -hmm. thing is, let's look closer at what David had. What was in his, um, um, his form of weaponry, okay? It, it, the scripture goes on to say, in particular, it actually gives a number, a numerical uh, um, value of how much stones he had. And it said five. He had five stones and a sling, okay? Now, we look at the biblical, um, from a biblical perspective, the number five yeah. signifies God's grace and favor. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's... That shows really what um, um, David was really representing. Like that showed, I just thought it to be a very important thing. Like, you know, that showed that God's favor and that shows in life. Once you get God's favor, everything is cool, okay? And right. it, it also, but the Bible also plays um, what I would say that there should also not be so much emphasis on the stones, but there should be an emphasis on what was happening in the supernatural. And that it was that God Almighty was with David. So sometimes, you know, you hear the story about David um, with the stones. But one of the major things that I think that needs to be focused on is that God Almighty was with him. And it said, David had, used, had five stones, but he had only used one to take Goliath down. And that shows the power of the Almighty God. And so I want to tell somebody today, that God only needs one shot to turn your life around and to bring down the giants in your life. He only needs one shot. And so just keep that in mind as you go through a situation. And when we have giants in our lives, we can look at the story of David and Goliath and we can, we can see the type of language and the way we should be speaking to the giants that are in our lives. And we see that in 1 Samuel 17, verse 45 and 47, which Calissa read in the opening um, um, scripture. And I just want to read it again. So this is how we should speak to the giants in our lives. We should be able to say, like the way David said to the Philistine, you come against me with the sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves for the Lord, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give all of you into our hands. And so as you see the giants that are in your life, I want you to be able to speak to those same giants, sickness, disease, um, joblessness, and the list goes on, as I said earlier, and be able to say that this is a battle that the Lord will fight and I will put my faith and trust in the almighty God and watch the Lord do is with one shot and take those giants down. Just have your faith increase. Um, Kalissa, um, I know I, I wanna get your input onto this as well, but let me just go into the comment section quickly um, before we go into um, your part as well. Um, we have Joette McKinsey who is here, welcome. She says, amen. Um, Rosetta Dorset also says, amen. We also have um, Ms. Sharon Richards who's here or with us on YouTube. Welcome Ms. Sharon Richards. She said, proud of you, ladies. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Um, we also have um, Rosetta Dawson with a comment. She said, handle it with grace. So true. God's rich anointing covers everything. We definitely need that anointing, grace, to overcome our present giants. Lord, help us to be overcomers. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. So, tell us about what all is going on. Just to piggyback off of what you said, because you said a lot of good points. You know, the story of David, I always say, is the story for the underdogs. You know, it shows us, one, how we can overcome 
all odds and be successful. It also shows us too that God can humble the proud because Goliath never thought he would have been defeated by a young boy. And like I said earlier, yeah. it said that David might have been less than 20 years old when he mm -hmm. defeated Goliath. You know, it also um, shows us three how trials can come to us and try to eat at our confidence or insecurities over and over. Goliath taunted the Hebrew Israelites for 40 days. And that number mm -hmm. symbolized trials, testing, yeah. and a period that comes before results. You yeah. see, uh, and many of us are probably going through our 40 days sometimes mm -hmm. in our lives right now. And what we need to understand is that we go through a period of challenges or obstacles to strengthen us and to make us wiser. Normally we look at challenges and obstacles and become debilitated um, by it. Like the Hebrew Israelites and allow our fear and uncertainty of the future to keep us stagnant as opposed to facing it head on like David. I think we discuss things like that in our Adapting to Change video. Moreover, it also shows us for, like Felicia said, how as people, you should not let the negativity around you affect your decisions. Mm -hmm. You know, both his brothers and King Saul did not think he could have defeated Goliath, you know, like Felicia was saying, but he did not listen to them. And because of that confidence he had in himself and God, he was victorious. And lastly, you know, the, the point also Felicia had stressed, and I had stressed it again, know that all the experiences that you have gone through has prepared you to face new challenges that come your way. David had experiences with wild animals and that afforded him an opportunity to face a nine foot nine champion fighter without mm -hmm. fear. He just pictured Goliath as a lion or a bear. Sometimes we overthink challenges instead of liking it to something that we have faced over and over in our past. Yeah. So sometimes we just got to look at our challenges like how David looked at Goliath and says, he's just like a bear or a lion and attack it yeah. just as that. I like that. That's good. Yeah. Also, two verses, there's verses that came to me during this whole time. And um, the verses that come to me is 1 Timothy 1 and 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And these are verses that you quote to yourself whenever you're going through all of these type of obstacles, when you are facing the Goliaths in your life. Mm -hmm. Matthew 17 and 20, when Jesus said, if you have faith as this mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and yes. nothing will be impossible for you. First Corinthians 1 and 27 says, but God has chosen the foolish things of this world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. David was considered this weak person to Goliath. And he used this weak person to yeah. put to shame the things which was mighty, which was Goliath. Another one is Romans 8, 31 to 39. And it goes, but I'm just going to read a few verses that really pops out to me, but you can read this by yourself. Romans 8, 31 to 39. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Yeah. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors yeah. through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, mm -hmm. nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, Amen. which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And these are things and verses that you quote to yourself when you are facing Goliaths in your life. Amen. That is powerful mm -hmm. right there. That is so true. Like, you know, ooh, wow. 
<laughs> that is powerful. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We have another comment coming in from YouTube from um, Radcliffe Roll, and it says, David was the Lord anointed. He cannot be defeated. And that it within itself, you know, really highlights the fact that, you know, it was that anointing. And when you have God's anointing, it really makes you undefeatable. Yes. And we yes, also have it, another comment coming in from YouTube from Miss um, Sona Levo, and she says, "Amen." Yes, Kalissa. Anything else you want to add? No, that's all. I'm just saying, you know, when you face Goliaths in your life, these are things you have to look at. You have to understand that yes, it's a challenge. And sometimes, like I said earlier, and even Felicia said, sometimes people come to you and make you feel insecure as to what you're going through. But you have to know that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Absolutely. And we have another comment coming in from Ms. Idris Bo, and she says, amen. Thank you for joining us and welcome to the show. Um, so that... That um, basically wrap up. Anybody have any questions or any comments or anything burning that you want to share? This is the opportunity to leave it in the comments so that we can discuss it. As you all know that this is an interactive virtual Bible study. We are focusing on characters in the Bible for this month in particular. Um, we're just going to really be drawing out stories um, from, um, I would say, biblical characters really related to the day and really highlight how these stories are still relevant now and so that we can learn from it and to be able to encourage each other and to inspire each other and so that even in this season of so much uncertainty we will keep our minds at peace because the word of god said that if we keep our minds stayed on god that he will mm -hmm. give us that peace and so that's what we really need in this season is that peace of god because once we get that peace that keeps our faith intact. And once we keep our faith intact, there's nothing that's impossible that can still happen. As you know with David, God just took with that one stone, that one shot, and gave yeah. it over. So that's how we get to be thinking about life and, and keeping positive like that. We have another comment. Uh, we have um, Rosetta Dorsey who says, Amen, Carlissa. We also have um, another comment coming in from Mr. Mafiar. Um, and he's saying awesome message. Amen. Thank you for joining us. We're so happy that you're here. Um, so with that said, if any, there are no comments, I know we come in with no, um, I would say comments or questions going once, going twice, going three times. I see no comments at the moment. I see an, okay. I see one comment here coming in from Andrew Sarah DeVries, and it says, amen, praise the Lord for his word and for you sharing these truths. Thank you for joining us. All right, thank, thank you, so thank you. All right. All right, so with that said, um, I'm gonna go and close this out with a uh, closing prayer. Um, and we just wanna let y'all know that we are also streaming on YouTube as well today. We did something different. And so um, we're just trying to make sure, they know some people don't have Facebook, so we're making sure we get to people on YouTube as well, getting the word of God out as best as we can. And then so next week, Sunday, 4 p.m. again, live, we will be back here um, sharing on the, the Bible story of Abraham. Yes, Kalissa, that's... Oh, yeah. So we'll be Abraham. So we'll be talking about Abraham. And so y'all don't want to miss that as well as we use Abraham's life to inspire and motivate us in 2020. And so let us pray. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity in this moment to, to think and meditate on your word. Father God, I pray for every person watching. God, that you give us strength to conquer the giants in our lives. God, increase the faith that we have. God, reduce fear in our lives. Help us to constantly meditate, pray, and to create a stronger relationship with you. For your word assures us that if we seek after you, God, that we will find you. That if we knock on the door, God, that you will open it unto us. God, your word also says that they that delight themselves in you, that you will grant us the desires of our heart. God, continue to create in us even a burning desire, God, to, to follow the things of you. Father God, forgive us of our sins, for your word also declares that the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. God, I pray for a spe special blessing and covering over every person watching, oh God. I pray that you 
cover us in the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, and that no weapon formed against us and our families and our homes shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Father God, I know that you are the great I am. And so God, we know that whatever it is, God, that we need, God, we know that you can do it. There is nothing impossible and you are a limitless God. And so God, wherever our needs are, God, we pray that you demonstrate Jehovah Jireh who you are in our lives and to be a provider. God, if we any one of us is sick, or we don't even know that we're sick. God, we pray for your healing hands of Jehovah Rapha. God, we thank you right now, God, for this opportunity, oh God, just to meditate. And God, we pray for open doors over our lives. And as we go through this 2020 season with so much uncertainty, God, we know that if you open a door, God, that no man can shut in. So God, we pray for open doors. And God, we also pray, God, that you continue to order our steps in the name of Jesus. Father God, let us have a great and safe week that we come back here again and to be even more excited about your word. And Father God, continue to use me and Calissa God for your glory as we continue to share in your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. And all right. Um, yes, we thank you all all. I see some more comments here. Um, we have um, cousin Wayne Miller who is here and he says, good message ladies, continue to be encouraged. God bless. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we have a message in from Rosetta Dawson that says, hallelujah, the highest praise to God. Yes. And so goes any other closing words that you want to say? No, just you guys be safe during this um, week. Um, and those verses that I said, you know, for those who are going through their obstacles and their giants right now, you know, remember all those verses that I said, you know, yeah. you can meditate on those words, you know, whatsoever things are pure and lovely, yeah. you know, we supposed to meditate and think on those things. Yeah. We have to really be protecting our minds during this time. If I could stress that to everyone watching, I know things are difficult. It's hard. I get it. I understand but we have to really protect our minds and how we protect it. We gotta be careful of the thoughts that we entertain. I wanna challenge you as you get thoughts that come into your mind that are negative, you spin everything back. It, or I would say, as you think about negative things that come through, through your mind, start thinking about the things that actually go in good in your life. And I always, tell, I always share and I say, one of the good starts of it is the fact that you woke up that morning and you're alive or you woke up today that's enough to give God thanks. So that means that his purpose and his plan for your life has not yet been fulfilled. And that shows that it's one more day that God can take that one shot and make things and, and eliminate all those giants or that giant in your life. So think about that and let's keep it motivated. And you know, if anyone have any special prayer requests or anything, feel free to message us on our Felicia Crystal Facebook page and we will pray on those things for you and with you, okay? So everyone. Oh, just to add, uh, sorry, just to add it there. Um, did you give? Um, I see a shout out. I don't know if you said the shout out to Aunt Sharon, who Sharon Richard. Yes, I did. She said, "Proud of you." I said, that. "Oh, okay, Aunt I Sharon." You too. Yes. Um, yes, I did. <laughs> so yeah, we do it somewhere. Okay. Be, be between two platforms today. <laughs> and so yeah, so Aunt Sharon came and said, "Excellent word." Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. So with that, tell us you have anything else to add. That's it. Nope. That's it. All right. Y'all. So see y'all Sunday again at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll be back here talking about Abraham. So see y'all later. Have a great week. Bye. All right, bye.